Good morning, students. Today we shall see about the measurement of Q factor and dielectric constant in microwave frequencies. Q factor, as we know that Q factor means quality factor. So how we are going to measure the quality of the microwave signal? So based on the uh, laws that are available in the environment, the quality factor will either improve or else declines. So the quality factor uh, value is based on the measurement of the loss in the microwave system. So in microwave system, uh, there are four types of losses, dielectric, conduction, radiation, and external. So the dielectric, conduction, and radiation are uh, due to the uh, material that is uh, used for the transmission of microwave medium. And the external uh, losses arise in the microwave frequencies that is due to the coupling in the network. As a whole, uh, Q factor is a function of frequency and the losses will increase with uh, increase in the frequency. That's why uh, the Q factor plays a very role, very high role in the microwave frequency since the frequency is very high. So this is the setup that is used for the measurement of Q factor. We are using a microwave source, then attenuator, and uh, the signal that is generated in the microwave source is tuned using the cavity resonator. Then that signal is detected using a detector, and then uh, we are using a power indicator. So here the cavity resonator acts as the device uh, that transmits. So it transmits based on the frequency that is generated by the microwave source. Uh, the output of the setup is plotted as a function of the frequency, which results as the resonant curve, which is shown in the next slide. So here the, um, we are seeing the resonant curve of our microwave system. Using this microwave curve, sorry, resonant curve, we can measure the Q factor by using this formula. That is the resonant frequency divided by 2 delta. This 2 delta is the half power beam width of the signal. So by taking the ratio of F0 and uh, 2 delta, we can easily find the value of uh, Q factor. This is how we will measure the Q factor of the um, microwave frequency. So this is the uh, measurement setup. Very first, the signal frequency of the microwave source is varied, uh, keeping the signal level constant and then the output measure is measured. This is the initial setup. And the uh, next step is the um, cavity resonator is tuned to the signal that is generated using our microwave source. And then the signal level and the output power is again noted down uh, to notice the difference. So first, uh, we are noting down the output power and the signal level without the usage of cavity resonator. And in the second step, we are using the cavity resonator and uh, noting the signal level and the output power. Then the output power is plotted uh, and using the resonant curve, we can uh, uh, notice the half power bandwidth, that is 2 del value. So this is how we will uh, measure the Q factor. Uh, for our microwave system. Then we shall see about the measurement of dielectric constant in microwave frequencies. So first we shall see about the dielectric constant. So each dielectric material has the ability to store the energy when an external electric field is applied. So the dielectric constant that is K is equal to epsilon by epsilon naught uh, is the ratio of it permittivity epsilon to the permittivity of the vacuum epsilon naught. The real part of this term, that is permittivity, is the measure of how much energy from an external electric field is stored in the material when an electric field is applied externally. So the imaginary part of the permittivity epsilon r is called the loss factor and it, it measures how dissipate or lossy the dielectric material is when an external electric field is applied. So based on this uh, real and imaginary part, we can uh, measure the dielectric constant. Then permittivity, uh, 
which is used in the dielectric constant uh, is the physical quantity that describes how an electric field affects and is affected by a dielectric medium. Um, since uh, we are measuring the dielectric constant using the externally applied electric field, this permittivity uh, term is very important. It is determined by the ability of the material to polarize in response to an applied electric field. And so it can cancel partially the field inside the material. Due to this effect, uh, permittivity is created. So hence, the permittivity relates a material's ability to transmit an electric field. Uh, the next term used in the dielectric constant is permeability, which is described as mu. It is the interaction of the material with the magnetic field. So basically, the permittivity is the interaction of the material with electric field. Permeability is the interaction of the material with magnetic field. So this is the measurement setup of the dielectric constant. Uh, from the main power, we are using a microwave power supply. Uh, as we know that uh, the beam voltage and repeller voltage uh, knobs are in the microwave power supply. By adjusting that, we are giving the specified beam voltage and repeller voltage to the setup. A microwave, so there is klystron is used. Then isolator is used to isolate the generated microwave frequencies. Then variable attenuator is used to do the input to the frequency meter. In frequency meter, the frequencies are measured and slotted section for sample as well as solid dielectric cell with micrometer. These two sections are used for the uh, placement of the dielectric uh, material for which we are going to measure the dielectric constant. So uh, we shall see the steps that are involved in the measurement of uh, dielectric constant. The microwave power source was energized and the suitable power level uh, in the indicating meter was noted. When uh, the sample holder has uh, no dielectric material placed inside the slotted section. That is, uh, we are going to measure the power level in the meter without the placement of uh, any dielectric material. The position of the standing wave uh, voltage minima was noted and recorded and the um, lambda g was com computed using the double minima method which we seen already. The frequency of the wave was measured by uh, frequency meter. So these three steps are done without the placement of the dielectric material. And then um, we are using the probe that is positioned at the maximum of the standing wave pattern. Uh, the cell is filled with the sample. Uh, the sample in the sense we are filling the cell with the uh, dielectric material. Uh, and we are performing the test by using a shorting plunger. Uh, the plunger was installed in the cell and uh, moved through the dielectric till it touches the dielectric cell. Then the plunger was uh, moved up and the minima was uh, recorded. Once again, the plunger was moved down uh, till the meter uh, reached double of the value in the previous step and the plunger position was recorded as H1. So all these steps are done after um, filling the cell with dielectric material. Then the plunger was moved up until the meter reached double the value of the minima in the previous step and the plunger position was uh, recorded. So here we are uh, measuring two times the minima uh, that is H1 and H2. After uh, measuring H1 and H2, uh, we need to find the double minima bandwidth, uh, which is the difference between the H2 and H1 value. Then the plunger was moved up and uh, it was positioned at the second minima. The position of the minima and, and double the minima width were measured and recorded. Uh, also, we are um, measuring the VSW or value of the reading. So, after uh, getting all these values, uh, we need to measure the dielectric constant of the material that is kept in the uh, cell. So for that, we need to do some analytical analytic. Lambda G is the guide wavelength and uh, this guide wavelength is measured 
that is twice the distance between the successive minima that is h2 and h2 h1 twice the distance between the successive minima is the guided wavelength here and the um, conductance is uh, measured using this formula after measuring the uh, conductance the dielectric constant is uh, measured thank you